Well, this <coughs> is a morning that we have been waiting for for a long time, isn't it? You've already been welcomed, but... Uh, <laughs> Pastor David, uh, we are just so blessed to have you here. You've been pushed down and down and down the preaching plan <laughs> until finally the day has come. But sorry we couldn't have the lunch. David, I've just been asked to uh, just uh, ask a few questions of you, if you wouldn't mind. Yes. Uh, probably about half the people here would know you and about half the people possibly don't know you. Yes. So th they need to find out a little bit more about you. So welcome back, as has already been said, and to Jenny, and to Nathan is out. There's Nathan. Thank yeah. you. Stand up, Nathan. Mm -hmm. Let everybody see Nathan. <laughs> Thank you. Look, Nathan, those people who are waving and clapping, they are the people who remember you from when you were 10, did you say? Wow. Well done. Good. All right. So welcome to you. Um, and I must uh, start by asking you this, um, Pastor David. Where are you currently... Um, ministering. Okay. Haven't retired. You're still ministering. No, no, yes. no, no. Hopefully, still a few years left yet. But um, I, I'm currently in the Greater Sydney Conference, and I'm the uh, well, the senior pastor at Warunga Church. Okay. Yeah. So next to the Adventist Hospital, the Adventist School there. Yeah. That's right. Where I'm oh. present. Thank you. Then, and tell us where have you been in the interim since you left our church at Erina, and how long ago was that? Well, it'll be 17 years ago next month, almost since I left. Wow. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So that I means if you left 17 years ago and Nathan was 10, 11 at the time, yep. he's now... 27, yeah, coming well on done, 28. Nathan. Yeah. Good on yeah. you. Yeah. Right. So uh, uh, w when we left here, we went to South Australia, and we were in South Australia for six years, uh, based in Adelaide. And then since 2011, we've been in Greater Sydney uh, at a number of different churches and, as I say, currently uh, at Warunga. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's very good. Now, um, when you came uh, to our church originally, which is if it's 17 and you're, I think, six years you were with us. That's is right. That right. That's right. So when you came here then, uh, those 23, 24 years ago, where did you come from and how did you relate to oceans and big waters? Uh, <laughs> well, I, 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 we came to Australia um, from Scotland. Um, I'm originally from Northern Ireland. I, I trained for the ministry in England, and we lived, Jenny and I and the family lived for three years in Scotland. Um, Jenny's originally from Sydney, so uh, you know, coming back to Australia was you know, obviously coming back home. Right. Uh, great waters. <laughs> well, I can't swim, uh, so I'm not... Um, th that's a problem, and yeah, I well, I know does, that there are a lot does, of sharks. Does and, this uh, photograph uh, yeah, yeah. remind you of anything? This uh, was apparently just a few months after you arrived on Christmas Day. You baptised that, a grandchild right. of Fran right. and Don. That wasn't too bad because at least it wasn't the. But open. you were still scared stiff to get into the water, uh, even uh, though it's a lagoon. I wasn't. Yeah, I'm not. I love looking at water. I'm not too fussy been in it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so a little later on, apparently, you got much more courage when it was in a swimming pool <laughs> and you went up here. But I'm just glad that he wasn't the one you were baptised. You would have drowned him before you even got him under the yeah. water. So, uh, what I do remember, I think, about that particular baptism was it was at the end of May and the water was cold. Oh, it was okay. cold. Oh, yeah, I think I, had, I think I managed to hide it to some extent once I got in, but oh, it was cold. Yeah. Good. Okay, we're glad you enjoyed that. Now, look, while we're just talking about uh, while you were here, I, I found this in the archives. Well, actually, Fran, um, Fran's photos. Um, no, sorry. It was in the archives, this one. And um, I, I'm a bit worried about you using a dog collar. What's mm. the story behind this? Uh, well, in actual fact, interestingly, Russell, I did use that a few times when it was in Scotland. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't unusual to be using it in Scotland. But I, I never had the opportunity to use it here in Australia, apart from this one occasion. And what was the one occasion? And uh, it was a sort of a farewell. And uh, if you've ever seen the, the movie Sister Act and, uh, the, um, and the song I Will Follow Him, uh, a group of men dressed up as nuns and, and came towards me I'm addressed in my dog collar, singing, I will follow him. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, look, the next I don't, question... Uh, well, <laughs> I don't know if that's on the records or not, but it was, uh, yeah, it was... All right. uh, it was a beautiful, uh, like, it was a lovely farewell, actually. We, we saw, 
We actually watched the movie Sister Act a few weeks ago and it brought back memories of that. Okay, yeah. very yeah. good. Now, um, here's a photograph that was apparently taken on the night of a Red Faces. Now, those of you who were around back then will remember the Red Faces night. And uh, you are very stubbornly folding your arms. Look at your mouth. You really are holding out on something. What were they trying to get you to do? Can you remember uh, that? I certainly Red Faces nights were memorable. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know what the occasion was then. Why? Why I was so defensive? Well, apparently there was yeah. a funnel they were trying to oh, put down here oh, to yeah, see well. if they could drop a penny from your nose to the funnel. Yes. So some of you might remember that, and no, no, David wasn't going to be in on that. Oh, oh, oh right. well, I was so in. And, did you come to the well, I, I was in on that actually because uh, the idea was a funnel was stuffed down the front of my trousers. Yes. And a 50 cent piece was balanced on my forehead. And the idea was to drop the 50 cent piece into the funnel. Yes. Uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't aware of this particular thing, but anyway, I did it once, I did it twice, and then there was the big, you know, uh, drum roll, so to speak. <laughs> and whilst I was concentrating on doing it a third time, someone poured water <laughs> down, down, down the front of my trousers, yeah. Um, that's why the photograph is taken from the belt up, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever. whatever. Yeah. All right, thank you. Now, let's move on. Um, I, uh, you mentioned before, um, oops, I think we, uh, no, just while I'm on this one, if, if I may, yeah. Jenny's sitting there with you. Um, just a, a moment or two, and I know you could talk forever, but my time's already finished, so sure. we must finish. Yes. But tell us, um, Jenny, currently working, um, and how does Jenny fit into your life so compassionately with ministry? Uh, Jenny works uh, at, at, a little bit at the uh, Adventist Hospital, because um, Jenny did train as a nurse and then as a midwife, so um, nice for Jenny to be back in a hospital setting right. again. Um, Jenny supports me uh, largely behind the scenes, but that, that means such a lot. Um, I, you know, can uh, plays the piano beautifully, so it's wonderful to have you know that practical support. But just um, you know, uh, a wonderful friend, support, encouragement. Uh, really means a lot to be able to come home and just unwind and talk about what's been happening. Fantastic. That, that really, that just really, that yeah. really means so much. Thank you, Jenny. And uh, I'm sure uh, many people could be nodding their heads to say that your testimony is our testimony as well. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you very much. Um, I have a, one last question here for you, if you wouldn't mind, and that mm -hmm. is, what drives you in your ministry? What's the sort of, you know head and shoulders above the rest kind of passion that you have that really drives you in your ministry. Yeah, yeah. Didn't have uh, time to think about this, did no, you? No, no. <laughs> well, well, hopefully it comes across in the message that's been, that will be presented this morning. Uh, but more and more, I, I think I realise just, well, hopefully realise more of the wonder of the gospel and, and, and the marvel of what God has done for us, of what Jesus went through for us. Yes. Just um, uh, the, yeah, just just the just the marvel of the gospel, and and, I mean that's that's what the that's what people need to hear. Yes. That's what I mean. There's so much going on in our world. You know, there's a culture war taking place. There's so many isms out there. But what people really need to hear is the gospel. Right. Okay. Uh, Thank yeah, you. That's yeah. that's a great yeah. answer. We appreciate yeah. that, and we're looking forward to your sermon very much this morning. Now, I want to make last a comment. You can make a comment on it if you want as well. But I believe you, uh, well, you've got a reputation for using great historical events to illustrate your sermons, all right? Mm -hmm. Now, apparently, um, it keeps people on the edge of the seat, and I believe even yourself keeps you on the edge of your seat too, does it? Uh, taking in those great gospel, uh, sorry, those great stories, illustrating that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, have we got a got? Have we got another good historical story this morning? There's a lot of history this morning. Oh, good. Yeah. There's a lot of. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I no. I do love history. I not so much about the dates and all, but it's just about people, isn't it? Yes. Yes. And, uh, and yeah. So there, there are quite a few references yes. this morning. Yeah.